We are live in the house. Lab, 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 lab. Yeah. Although I can't see the video popping up for me. Yeah, here we go. Here we go. Yeah, Mr. Onion Jr. is already seconds. biggest fan reporting in. Mr. Onion Jr. Voody. Onion Jr. Voody. 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 That's it. That's it. I was thinking, I what, what would I do if you popped up late? Because you were you were talking about coming here late, coming here like potentially like right on seven o'clock. Yeah, howdy, fellas. I think you'd probably just have to start me. like riffing, yeah, with people who are there. Yeah, well, I would I would definitely try and speak with whoever's in the chat for sure. Riff, riff. What, what would I do? Ah, oh, mate, give us give us some here some riffs. Give us some Snoop Doggy, Snoop Doggy D, Snoop Doggy D. Did you see any of the halftime show of the Super Bowl? No, I did not. It was rocking. I would recommend everybody. Uh, stop listening to the Immortals and go and listen to that. It's it actually really good. They got uh, Dre, um, Petey Cent, Snoop Dogg, and there was a particular point when uh, uh, Dre and Snoop Dogg were basically on top of this building, okay. sort of singing along, and then they point down. And you know that famous 50 Cent song where he's hanging upside down in the... Um, yes, of course, yep, in the club, course. in the yeah. facilities. In the facility, yeah. like the, whatever it is. Anyways, yeah, so then 50 Cent's hanging upside down underneath the building and starts singing. It's like, do shit. shit. Uh, so he's actually hanging upside down doing... Yes. Stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, All I heard was something about a QR code that on, from Coinbase. From Coinbase. Yeah, that was the uh, the main news that I heard. Yeah. So we still got five minutes. So, Do you know, um, guess who created that uh, ad? Oh, uh, um, who created it? I know there was like... It's like an Indian guy, right? Sanju or... No. Blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So... Coin, well, coin, it's Coinbase's ad, yeah, but it was done by Accenture. It was done by Accenture Interactive. Okay. Yeah. I don't even know they're in the advertising game. Yeah, they've actually been investing the last couple of years. So they moved into digital and then have been going heavy into media. And what they've been actually been doing, especially in Australia, they've been buying out. Uh, they bought out the monkeys and they bought out a couple of other companies so that they're getting more into the media space. Yeah. I actually think they're like a massive player. The monkeys are a massive player at Virgin Australia through their media. So okay. I was like, oh, shit, cool. The monkeys, okay. The monkeys. Yeah, I'm just uh, doing a, a small test here of switching between the, with my new hockeys, if I if it actually switches between this. Yeah, there we go, there we go. And then we're on there, very cool, very cool. It's funny seeing the lag, so... It's, yeah, it's, prob- it's probably about a 10 second lag between YouTube and the... um. Computer. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know what that's called? Lag. I'd call it more latency. Latency. Yeah. Latency. Well, what's the difference between lag and latency? Well, latency is what's causing the lag. I guess so. That makes sense. That makes sense. All right. Still three more minutes. So. This is going to be an absolute conversation about definitions, I think. This today is? Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, it's an interesting I, one. I brought a couple up. Good, good, good. Um, just w- ready and waiting. To me so warm. Mr. Onion Jr. Um, <laughs> I was this last two days. Uh, so normally when I go home to my family, I'm sort of chilling out, and that, that's where I like. I won't really watch podcasts. I'll watch stupid YouTube stuff. So it's a mixture of memes. It's a mixture of sport highlights. Chilling out, and a mixture of anime. Cool. And and usually it's like highlighted scene sort of like the best of anime gotcha, that, or okay. it could i'm sort of been finding a couple of channels which have given me like anime episodes but condensed down from 30 minutes or you know 22 minutes whatever they normally are down to like the down, really compressed like down to minutes, like the real good minutes. stuff so yeah. it's you know cuts out the dramatic moves it cuts out a lot of the stuff and gets to the meat the pauses yeah mm. and uh, i was uh, actually re getting it back into attack on titan and a couple of the, okay. mm-hmm. the things and if you remember i said i got out of that because of the politics and i found oh yeah, yeah there, yeah, there was yeah. like these polit like it just started becoming all political and i was just like this is so boring i mm. can't i can't handle it now that was on the the manga that i was reading but when i sort of went to the 
you know, the wiki fan, whatever those pages are, you know, where it's like the fan page thing that they've created. So in depth too. Uh, yeah. Mm. It's super, super in depth. And I, I started reading it and I was like, damn, okay. I sort of get this. I get this now. I get, Ooh, I get okay. why yeah, they're, yeah. they're fighting against each other. It all started to make so much more sense. Then I was like, shit, I got to start watching some back of these into it. Okay. So I, I, you know, I, I said, I was literally just saying, oh man, I've been really busy, but that is because you know I wasted probably two hours. Gotcha. Okay. I don't mind watching it fair, if, fair, if gotcha. I'm, you know, eating or if I'm doing something like but that. But it was like explicit watching. Yeah. Yeah. Got to Got to cut that. It's bad, as bad as my Agario. Yeah. Yeah, mate. I've got like, I've got Agario on my phone now. So the mm, um, that's the that's, drugs moved on. It's moved in. Oh, it's that's, closer to home. That's really bad. Uh, <laughs> that's the really drug, bad the drugs <laughs> close. I had to actually turn off the notifications just to make sure it didn't like impede me from like life. Oh geez. All yeah. right, we got 40, 27 seconds. Yeah. Okay. I'll uh, let me get this up here, and we'll. Um, Who else we got on the off? line? So we've got Westside Baby. Let's go. You can start now. Westside Baby has turned up. Your favorite fan. Yes, come on. Westside. Yeah. Attack, AOT is so good. Attack on Titan. Yes. I'm, I'm learning so Website's many... Websites P, right? Yeah. I'm learning so many more acronyms nowadays. Like, what? Uh, there was one... There was a crypto-related one. It was like financial-related as well. And I was just like, there's no need to... Assets, assets under management. AUM. Yeah, yeah, I was like, why do I need... I don't need... Westside. Westside, baby. Make sure... Change your um, profile name to Pernus. Pernus. I agree. Yeah, it would be fantastic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All I'm right. going to call you Pernus from now on, mate. I'm going to kick it off, mate. So Let's do it. Let me make this and here we go. Awoo! Beep, 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 beep. Welcome, everyone, to another Mere Mortals musing session. This is a live Good. session that we do where we dive deep into a topic, a theme. It's a bit more structured and we... Read out and uh, do some boostergrams, some value for value as well. If you're w- watching on the uh, TV screen, on the on the YouTube screen, mm-hmm. I'm wearing my boost shirt that I got from Fountain. So now's a good time to boost. Send us through a message uh, on the topic of decentralization. Mm-hmm. So you've got Kyron here on this side of the mic. One over here on the other side. One on the other side. And I'll, I'll bring up my notes quickly and tell you why I wanted to, to choose this topic. And so... If you go back to, I think it was the episode last week, one of the meanderings, right at the very end, we got kicked out by the wind and the rain and I was just starting to get into a new topic. Yeah, we were. And it was probably best because the topic, now that I think about it, would have probably taken ages to talk about if I really wanted to, what I really wanted to talk, delve into. So, So we got lucky. Thank you, Mother Nature. And it basically came from a video I saw, which was Charles Hoskins, who is the... Is it Hoskins or Hoskinson? Charles Hoskinson, Hoskinson yeah. on uh, who is the creator of the Cardano uh, cryptocurrency and the Cardano project. Um, and he was doing a video on a blog post of this guy called Moxie Marlinspike. Moxie Marlinspike. Yeah. Now, Moxie Marlinspike was a very, I guess, like well-known Web 1, Web 2 developer uh, crypt, uh, crypto and when I say crypto I mean cryptography guy so he would like gotcha. look at okay. systems uh, he would he was sort of writing in I think for magazines like Wired and things like that so imagine that it's sort of not a journalist per se but a blogger maybe you know, yeah. one, one of those guys who's just he was in that era of of really diving into mm. sounds well, it sounds like he would know and, and what, what he's talking about if he was to talk about anything in relation to for this. sure yep. for sure and so the the point of the video was him to was him to read out sort of like a reaction video, reading out what was happening in uh, this this guy Moxie Marlin's bikes mm. blog post, um, which was examining the world of cryptocurrency because mm-hmm. he hadn't really dived into it before. Uh, well, crypto in general, I guess, like the crypto sphere. Gotcha. Um, and there'll be a link for that if you both uh, to the video, and then if in the video there's also a link to the. The actual blog post itself, and what I found really interesting was the the aspect that he was he kept on finding. Oh, uh, he would test things out, and he would butt up against this, being like, "Oh, it's not decentralized." I, I thought one of the the main purposes of of crypt, crypto cryptocurrencies was mm. they're decentralized. Yet he would continually come up to these points where he would go past well beyond your average user stage mm. and realize, "Oh, if this stuff's up." This happens. I got kicked off of this platform because of this thing. Mm. Uh, and so it was sort of like a continual 
realization and it sort of is somewhat realization for me that oh i think similar to you that maybe i realized they weren't decentralized and like oh everything's you can't break down anything mm. because everything's backed up on secure stores everywhere yep. and, and things like that i wasn't that level but i it was a bit surprising to me just how easy it was for him to to butt up and find these areas of, mm. of non-decentralization of, gotcha. of very centralized aspects and so yeah i want to get into that and i sent you the video as well so you can um you, you know what i'm talking about at exactly least. yes i do in case i didn't listen to it but i did i listened to it at two deck speed i heard i heard you listening beautiful. to it and i was like are you actually going to understand any of what's going on <laughs> Mate, i was gonna i was gonna i'm gonna call charles and tell him what it's all about but it was interesting to me i mean the concept and maybe we should start at the definition or because if you just Google decentralization, yep. you're going to get shit all about crypto uh, cryptocurrency. In fact, all you're going to get is that decentralization is more about governments and work and the structure of management and decentralization mm -hmm. of that. So what have you got for us in terms of that? Yep. So if I go here onto my my handy websites that I've, I've brought up, we have the dispersion or, distribu the dispersion or distribution of functions and powers, i.e. a decentralization of powers. Uh, then it says specifically government, the delegation of power from a central authority to regional or local authorities. Uh, in the sociology type, it's the redistribution of population and industry from urban centers to uh, outlying areas. Mm -hmm. So further away from, I guess, like the crowded main um, sections. Yep. So that's that's one just there, the, the Wikipedia one, which is uh, I was having a, a chat with my family last night and yeah. my, my brother and dad both agreed that uh, Wikipedia is an amazing source and should be citable. My dad was actually a teacher and he would let um, I would say I would say it should be citable. Wikipedia. It's a yeah. fantastic thing. Yeah. Uh, anyway, he, in, in Wikipedia, it says the process by which the activities of an organization, particularly those regarding planning and decision making, are distributed or delegated away from a central authoritative location or group. Okay, I like that one yep. better. Yeah. That, yeah, that one's a pretty good one. Mm. Uh, the, most of the others I see are more blog post type ones and they usually refer crypto. So it's sort of getting away from what the word itself means. That's that's people adding their own. Gotcha, okay. So yeah. it's like decentralization in blockchain. Yeah. So it's like a, it's an addition, not, yeah. not a combination. Yeah. There was a couple of uh, interesting things in the Wikipedia one, which I liked, which was, you know, it was sort of breaking it down a bit more. So it'd be government dis decentralization. So there's really looking in terms of how governments have been spread out over vast areas. So sort of think of maybe like the Roman Empire. Mm -hmm. Yes, you had the Senate, but there was very individual states and they would... Um, have have their own powers like sure. they, they would be able to do what they want now in this conversation do we want to focus in on decentralization when it comes to blockchain in general i think we'll, we i think we'll it? go to that mostly yes okay but okay. i i have a couple of points related to the idea of it okay. as, as well so i found the this particular uh description and maybe you want to bring it up so it's called what is decentralization in blockchain and it's amazon's description uh yeah yeah here is we it, go is it on? i had it up yep. what is oh, there you go there's that one so i actually thought that this one was pretty pretty on the money when because it's got some examples about that but i like the fact that and i'll just read it out that in blockchain decentralization refers to the transfer of control and decision making from centralized but then it says to a distributed network, right? Yep. But if you go and read down further, it actually says it's decentralized, there's distributed, and then there's decentralization. Mm. So what it all screams to me is that... Have you seen that good um, graph which shows the, the three? Centralized, distributed... Uh, distributed and, and yeah. decentralized. Uh, Do you want to just bring it up yeah, for you as well? Yeah. But um, what is evident, I mean, again, to me, there's words being thrown there of centralization... Uh, distributed and decentralization um, that you know that should point to you very much directly that oh hey that's to give you an idea that um, it's there's more more than likely it's a um, you know it's, it's a sliding scale as opposed to a direct definition so yeah so the image you've got there you know in the left hand side you're talking absolutely have centralized to yep. a certain core thing yeah so for those just uh listening that's a it's a picture where all of these dots are just zooming in onto this one sort of one single central yep. area in the middle the other one is there's a bunch of sort of clustered dots which go to it's sort of like a second layer there's uh 
semi centralized ones, yep. but they all go into a main one as well. So that's so that's a your distributed so, sort of style, and then uh, you have what on the right hand side the decentralized where it's essentially well, this, like this all actually said mode. distributed is the the very right hand one with and the middle one being what de- the middle one being decentralized. <laughs> Let me try and find another one just to make sure. Interesting. Uh, yeah, because I have seen that. Oh, yeah, there you go. Distributed. Uh, I, I have actually seen this before because um, this one is more how the IPFS is, is said to have worked. Yeah, distributed um, way. Yeah, so it's like you can't... Um, and the Lightning Network for another one is, is, is another uh, aspect of that where mm. I can send... Uh, you know, if I create a node... I have to sort of manually connect nodes to different people and I'm not able to just send it from wherever I am directly mm. to the other side of the world, which is more of a, a decentralized one in a way. Like if you get large enough, I could send it maybe with less hops, something like that. Yeah, okay. So maybe it's less of a sliding scale. It's more like a, a, um, a triangle with those three points of centralization, decentralization and um, distributed and sort of like moves across there because it's not really then linearly changing from one extreme to the other, I guess. Mm. But um, yeah, I think, well, specifically, I guess what I was finding is more because a lot of them said, talked about power. And I went, I think what we're talking about here is decentralized networks because essentially the blockchain and what we're talking about of decentralization compared to centralization is probably the network effect and what it's actually connecting to Mm -hmm. so okay i guess it's moving that ability or exerting that authority moving it away from it all coming from one centralized way and moving it over to more of the single entity decision making i guess yeah so cool okay so what what of that uh particular video i guess from charles did you go oh shit okay that was something i that really opened my eyes i guess Well, well the cool one was i guess him being able to sh- so basically what he was doing was he was like oh um nfts seem really popular i'm going to play around with creating my own nft mm. i'm going to see how it works see how you can get it listed on certain places uh i will i think he used he used the ethereum network mm. but I, I, I imagine this applies to most of the of the ones which uh, can create nfts mm. and he was finding like oh if i put metadata in this way um i can have it appear on the main wallets in different ways. So on this wallet, it will come up with this image. With this wallet, it will come up with the poo uh, emoji. emoji. Mm. And so he was able to somewhat manipulate, I guess, what you were seeing so that, yes, it was like a non-fungible token, but mm. it was changing in any case. Like it, it really, um, I don't know, is, is one of the aspects of an NFT, for example, that it is meant to be only one thing, like an immutable unchanging thing or is is it you own this asset whatever it is and yes you can prove that it's yours and only yours but it could change over time so that picture you have of a dog could change something could else. change to to something else and you i think know, and i think this is where it comes a, to i think from a learning perspective and i probably should have said this right at the beginning like we are in no way shape or form experts in anything that it comes to the deep technical knowledge of blockchain to what we're about to talk about we're but coming I, this is I, our knowledge of what we've been listening to and whatnot yeah, but this i am a financial mortals. advisor so exactly yeah. what I <laughs> but this is for you know mere mortal from mere mortals to mere mortals but i think that largely and widely i find that the conversation when it relates to um nfts in decentralization, when they go, when you look at an image or where people say, if I showed you in my MetaMask and I show you an image, people go, that's your NFT, right? That that image of the cow, that image of the monkey, that's your NFT. That board mm-hmm. ape, that's the NFT. And it's something that uh, Lucas from, um, you could go and check Lucas' interview I did a while back, but that really called out to me was that, and this is from people obviously who know about crypto and, and the like, is that NFT doesn't so much refer to the image it actually just refers to the smart contract. It just really means there's a smart contract against the blockchain, right? That is yeah. written on the blockchain. So that smart contract is theoretically really what the NFT is. So again, so why is there an image? Well, the smart contract contains within it a URL to a cloud hosted set of an image. And so that is your presentable viewable NFT from a visual perspective, but just like code or other things within your computer it's actually a 
URL link just written in the smart contract, which for all intents and purposes, as Moxie said, you could make that like, you know, turn into a poop emoji when it's sent to a particular wallet. Or it could be that you could make it that it disappears completely, it goes blank or something when it moves to another place. You could totally do that. It would be all written within the smart contract. I think, again, why, why aren't we seeing like some crazy things happening in that space where, um, you know, maybe people like do a rug or something where it disappears when you go to it or it does something crazy. I would say probably because not many people uh, even have that skill or knowledge to do that sort of stuff. I, I imagine it does take some skill. Mm. It's easier to just present an image. I think harder to make it go, you know, go down the route of making a change when you move to one wallet or another. Yeah. I don't know how much applicability it's got in like NFT use, but certainly the the fact that it's present in the smart contract is what makes the NFT an NFT as opposed to just being a transaction written onto a blockchain. It's always transaction that's got a smart contract behind it. But as you said, smart contracts can get changed at any time as well. So an example, one of my V friends, sure, one of them is a swaggy sea lion. Mm. 10 years down the track, that could change to poopy be poo lion. a poopy poo <laughs> lion. Yeah. And I'll be like, well, there's nothing I can do because I own the, the contract itself being written in the blockchain. I don't control Mm. what is done that's done by the whoever's got the authority that i've written in over the top of it yeah now i don't also know realistically how much people can edit that or not i don't know how editable it actually is because it's not editing the blockchain it's editing the contract i haven't not looked into that detail at all um i don't know if you have either but i wouldn't i wouldn't even feel free to comment on that at all yeah yeah okay um yeah, let, let's let's maybe jump back to the definition, which was you know de- distributed or de- uh, delegated away from a, a central authority of location or group. So even though that's saying you know the the power or the um, the activities mm. are not in one single place, it doesn't mean that you get it now. So just because you're you have some Bitcoin or something, mm. it doesn't mean that you now have any of the activities or the power that was. Perhaps in well, let's just use a, a monetary example. example. The you have no decision making with regards to what the Australian the the government does with the Australian dollar. If they print more, sure. they print less. You know, that's sort of the the two main things they can do. Mm-hmm. Because Bitcoin comes around, and it's like, hey, we're decentralized money. Mm-hmm. This doesn't mean that the activities or the power now goes to you directly. Um, and is, is now like you have one tenth or one, if you are, if there is a, a thousand users, not like you have one, one thousandth of the activities or the power mm. it's now, it's just now not all in one place that, that, that yeah, is yeah. gone out and, and been distributed, decentralized mm. away. So I was sort of thinking, um, you know, well, what, how, is, how is Bitcoin different then? And I would say it's, you know, it's, it's better because there is it's open source. So you, if you really want to, if you mm. want some of that ability to be active with it and to make changes with it and to, to have that, you can now, you know, um, add to the open source code of it and you can go to the Bitcoin core. I think it's, is what it's called, like the GitHub and, and add suggestions and do things like that and mm-hmm. have, be part of those conversations. So yeah, I, I, I would just wanted to point out one thing, which was just cause it's decentralized doesn't mean that, and and so the, the there's no one central location doesn't mean that you now get some of the no exactly of and the, I mean of that it, we can pull it's, we it's can pull it elsewhere. we can pull it back out of the the Bitcoin conversation if it's a little bit you know too for someone who hears it and goes ah uh, but what's the difference because uh, let's call it with Firefox right Firefox is a browser it's also open source I'm pretty sure which means that again anyone can go into Hiccup GitHub and try and support it again it's not like you have the power to all of a sudden make like all of these changes it's just more decentralized mm. so i think what i think i think people get is like when you say oh it's blockchain it's decentralized no it's more decentralized than centralized but that doesn't mean it's it is decentralized it's sort of uh, maybe putting it in another perspective if you live in the city how centralized or decentralized are you from everything that's connected to like the government or what utilities there are. Maybe you're quite centralized. Mm. Let's say you move out to rural Queensland, right? And you have your own energy, 
but you're still connected to the water source and maybe you have a backup energy connection. Okay, you're more decentralized. You're moving away from being centralized to what utilities specifically. Yep. Now, if you want to be decentralized, does that mean you have like absolutely no connection to anything of utilities or anything like that? Okay, that's really decentralized. How beneficial is that? Well, you make up how much of a benefit it is. Does it benefit uh, blockchain to be absolutely decentralized to the absolute hilt? Maybe not. There might be some in terms of consensus where it's good, but there's some places where it's, it's good to be distributed and connected to other peers. But I think one of the things that Charles brought about in that video, and I think I've heard it in many other places as well, is the ask of every single person having a node mm. to be truly centralized. Yeah. Ain't going to happen. That, yeah. that is not going to happen. Well, do you want to explain more what he was, one of the main points that Moxie was saying? In the, do, you, do you remember? Mm. Well, I, I, I remember... He, he was essentially saying, you know, we sort of had this argument when the Web 2 was coming up. Mm. Uh, like there was, Web 1 was real clunky. You This was like the basic, you know, programming websites where you couldn't really add addition to it. You would just go to the site and look at it. You could Well, it was more decentralized than Web 2 in some ways, I think that they were saying. Because you had to be the one creating almost yeah. like node structure and the website. Yeah. So Web 1, while... Maybe it sounded like it might have been set up. It actually was more decentralized than Web 2 was mm. because of the fact that you could only access it because this person was running this website and that person was running this website. Well, he was saying the servers. He was saying mm. like the main thing to take out from Web 2 was it, if you want a decentralization, mm. you need to run your own server. And the people have come to the like the consensus mm. that we don't want to run our own servers. No. That shit's hard. Yeah. That, nobody, nobody wants to do that. It's a pain in the ass. Yeah. It's, it's annoying. And so he was saying, I'm going to put that question to anyone in the comments. Is, do any of you run your own servers? Mm. There might be. Mm. There might be, but I'm going to say it's few and far between. Yeah. Well, what is a node a server? Is that, is that counted as a server? Do you know? Let's just call a server itself a node. Like it's just a, a point of connection that you host, whether it's a mm. server or something else. Let's just say it's a node. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, there's, you know, Peter might because he's, mm -hmm. he's into Bitcoin and, and whatnot. Um, a lot of the podcast and 2.0 people are starting to do it. But, mm -hmm. you know, look at me. I, I did everything that I could to not do it for mm -hmm. six months yeah. because it was a pain in the ass. And I didn't, correct, correct, correct. And I didn't want to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, so, yeah, he was saying like that was the main that was the main point. That was the mm -hmm. there's still until people want to run their own servers and do it. Hmm. you're always going to have these points of uh, just centralization, whether it's a centralized exchange. So this is like a Binance or Kraken or Gemini or Coinbase or CoinSpot or whichever it is that you want. Correct. Those are always going to just be huge power, powerhouses of of money coming in, for hmm. example. Um, particularly, we're talking uh, DeFi and crypto. So yeah. That that's one area where you can see like, oh, they have a shit ton of Bitcoin. They have mm. a shit ton of ADA and they are well, I think it's using like, it. Here's know. an even more extreme example. It's um Dogecoin, I believe it is, that the top eleven holders hold fifty percent of the coin. I thought it was even more than that, yeah. Maybe more. So yeah. you know what I mean? It's decentralized, but it's centralized in the way that most of the people who hold most of the coins own and control the coin. So yeah, should... is it decentralized? Is it centralized? I should have looked this up in uh, before, but there's something called the Satoshi or the Nakamoto coefficient. Have you heard of that? I have heard of it, but I wouldn't be able to tell you what the hell it is. Like okay. in passing, it's been said. I'm just bringing it up right now. So the Nakamoto coefficient combines the Gini coefficient. So that one is about oh, yes. uh, wealth inequality. Yep. Uh, to... Um, that one is, uh, do, 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 let me, with the idea of subsystems, answer the questions of how many entities in a, and then we need the screen to load. Uh, oh, of course, then I was reading it um, from a different section. Good. <laughs> Damn you, Google. Uh, I'll just start reading from here. Uh, if one believes that decentralization is binary, then there is no need for any measure. The answer should always be yes or no. However, the coefficient relies on the assumption that decentralization is a spectrum. So if we didn't even get into that. Is it a, is it a yes or no? Maybe we can mm. chat about that in a second. Uh, the goals of introducing the coefficient include measuring the extent of decentralization, determining how 
modifications impact decentralization and faci facilitating optimization of algorithms to maximize it. Jesus Christ, what is this? Um, or I have seen some things saying that uh, certain places like Bitcoin are actually relatively centralized in some ways because in terms of mining, the there's like top three mining pools mm. can own 70 percent of the hash well, well we this, probably shouldn't be talking about well, but, numbers well so we without that, but so here's there. here's just a couple of um other things right so let's just go talk about the spectrum because again i just want to get back to because when people say yeah this is centralized and this is decentralized and this is like purely just on network blockchain conversations right you could say that it's either decentralized or distributed or decentralized across any of these things right the network or the hardware the solution the data the control the points of failures, the to fault tolerance, the security, the performance, um, and no, I won't tell. Uh, sorry, across those, ones, right? So you could say that a system is centralized in one of those things, but decentralized in other ways. So that's why I think that the saying that oh, we yeah, have blockchain is decentralized is not so much true until you really dig into what the hell does that mean? Because you say it, it's again too like too black and white. Here, there's again as many things. It is a dichotomy. It's a spectrum. You know, it goes across different ones. Um, I wanted to pick this one up because obviously it's one that it got talked about heaps in that Charles video. Data, right? So example of centralization, it's maintained and controlled by a central entity. Distributed, typically owned and managed by customer. Decentralized, only added through group consensus, right? So when you think through that, you go, okay, I kind of get it. But then... The spectrum and the example they gave, and I think we're talking about is, let's say with NFTs, right? So from a, if you want to look at the data perspective of the contract, like as a contract perspective, yes, it's only added through group consensus. Sometimes that could be like a DAO. So like the centralized autonomous organization, they will only add things specifically around data. That's by consensus that everyone in the group who has a voting ability votes for it. But when it comes to, like say the data and NFT, as we said, the NFT itself and the contract is pointing to something in the cloud, which is where your image holds, right? Mm. And you could even take it back and go, well, those service providers of those clouds are actually a certain handful of companies that actually pretty much hold a centralized view of every other hosting system. So all of a sudden it's like, oh, when you go down the chain, it's like, oh, there's some real hardcore centralization happening in these particular areas. But as it gets more to the peer or the user, it feels more decentralized in other ways. So even within specific attributes, I would say, yes, there's ways that it's decentralized, but you're not going to get away from some centralization because it's not it's not practical. Hmm. And so again, the conversation of let's say Instagram or Facebook with through Meta, right? It could be decentralized. Like you could have it that you hold all your all your um, photos. You go and build your own server. And you hold all your photos and you put them somewhere that it can be accessible for people to see. Sure. How many users are going to participate in such an experience? Not many, mm, yeah. if any. <laughs> so there, centralized actually has, makes the ability or distributed makes the ability for people to actually interact in that way. So you do build networks. So yeah. there are going to be examples where it's not going to be practical for to be fully decentralized, nor should you want it to. For sure. Mm. Let's take a little break, um, do some boostergrams, and I want to respond to the chat quickly. And also a little learning here for some people at home. Don't set your hotkeys to letters because oh, I was what like, done? What I, done? Set, I set it to N and B. Yeah. And then I was trying to respond to some of the comments that we were getting. <sighs> of course. <laughs> and the hotkeys were firing <laughs> off. And so I just went, ah, oh, shit. So I've now put them onto the number pad. So learning for those Good at home. call, good call. Um, a couple of things. Uh, Mr. Onion Jr. asked, what is DeFi? DeFi is decentralized finance. So this is, mm -hmm. imagine going onto a, your, like a stock platform and being able to buy a stock or option trading or futures or all of that sort of, sort of stuff it's that but being able to do it in a way where i believe it was there's no one company like there's it's more algorithms managing all of the trades right it's it's not, yeah less regulators so like, more algorithms so like what's the def difference between a centralized exchange and a decentralized, decentralized exchange, exchange? I mean, I, I one know. i would say it's the, the re regulation that's more yeah, I th algorithm based. I th yeah, I think it was more you. You don't have certain individuals 
um, being able to get priority access with their their trades or things like that. I, th- I think it was something related to that. Man, we're just talking, talking about- out our ass. Yeah, we're. This isn't the uh, the most researched. Mere mortals, folks. Well, it doesn't matter as much as we could have researched for this. I've got to tell you. Oh, yeah, we yeah we're trying yeah, we're to just struggling. describe things at the highest level because. This guy is turtles all the way down. Decentralization all the way down. Yep. A um, couple more. Nice shirt, Kyron. Thank you very much, Peter. Boost, uh, boost, boost. boost. Uh, he says, Wikipedia is a centralized CIA propaganda tool. <laughs> Do you guys even Bitcoin? Now, one caveat I did want to add to my endorsement of Wikipedia is it's good for the hard sciences, for technical yeah. things. Really good for that. Even too good sometimes. Mm. It can be too, too overwhelming. Hard. Yeah. Um, but when it comes to, uh, people and, and the perception of, of things like that or religion or something, which is like a little bit more hot, let me, let me, let me simplify subjective. Good for facts, not for, not for stories. Yeah. Good for facts, not for stories. Yeah. I've, I've seen some people being treated just really badly and then other people treated really good Mm. and you're sort of like, oh, geez, you're presenting, yes, the 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 information in there is factual, but the way it's presented gives a story that could be a, makes it seem could not, be biased, could be whatever. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, and then Peter says it's super easy. Yes, I'm guessing he's referring to creating a node, or either creating a node or creating a server. Creating a oh, node. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think I think he might be right in the sense that it it could be. Super oh, yeah, easy. Yeah, 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 like, yeah. I, I creating just... a server is easy as well. Creating a server is, is super it? easy. Yeah, oh, okay. yeah. Super, super easy. All right, well. Like, if we're talking like old school server, maybe that's difficult. Yeah. Uh, like cloud-based servers, we could spend one up literally in this podcast. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, a cloud-based server is different from a... I think when he was talking about a server, a local, Moxie, a local yeah, server. Yeah, I think he was talking about that. Built. And then uh, Mr. Onion Jr. says running an ETH node is expensive. I think you need something like 23 ETH to get started. Um, it's actually 16 is the minimum now, but yeah, you know, <laughs> what's that? 100 and whatever. One V friend. Yeah, uh, <laughs> that's uh, at, at current prices, that is about 64 grand Australian, which is. As of today's not, day, yeah. Yeah, which is not nothing. So. Uh, agreed even be trying to get into some or uh, become more decentralized in some ways cost you 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 know it's it's only for certain people um, mm-hmm. so for sure you want to read out some uh, boostergrams from my end i would love to we're going one here from b marcy b marcy b marcy do you know who this is i think that might be brian marcy is is the name that comes up perhaps I, okay I, and he I, says I don't just that. stand there boost yes yes thank you my mates brian boost. so he said Five thousand sats oh, yeah. using Fountain. That's a good. That's Thank a good you very number. much. Be massy. Another one from Dave Jones says, "Okay, I pause it, and my bet for how long it will take for the branch to be moved is not by the end of the show." Yeah. Nice. Well, you were correct. He sent two hundred and twelve sats sent using Castomatic, and then he sent another one saying, "Do fail." Another two hundred twelve sats. Yeah. Sent so that was right afterwards. Yep. Nice. And then, uh, so oh. for those who are wondering, oh, yes. a tree fell down while we were doing an outdoor podcast. A, a tree branch fell down, blocking the path entirely, and it was a big, thick one, you know, two meters long. And one and I had a bet on on how long it would take for the, for it to get moved or not moved. Mm. I think, and I, I definitely won that one. Now, of course, we cannot go through a boostergram session without these two being mentioned. Number one, Instagram love. Peter, Peter, the Peter, Slav. Slav. Dave Jones is my personal hero and an inspiration to us all. That being said, he's going down. 3,333 sat sent using Fountain. Seven. Peter, as always, very, very appreciative, mate. Thank yes. you. Yeah. Um, this one's a big one from Dave. Um, two. One, didn't think that it was going to be very... Uh, I didn't think that I was going to be very interested in this conversation about competition. Mm-hmm. But now I'm thinking about it. The difference between something like a chess match, hand sense, and a foot race. It's a continuum with chess being pure mental, handstand being both mental and physical, and foot raising purely physical. Since 1,221 sats by Castomatic. I would say yes to a degree, yes to a degree, but I would say things like a foot race does have some mental aspects to it. It's a little chess bit, yeah. does have some physical aspects to it. If you're doing a four-hour chess match, and specifically, if you recall the... Um, 
oh, what's his name? Art of Learning, Probably. Josh Waits King. Yeah. Um, so he was talking about it that, you know, some of the tactics that I actually play is that they would try to stretch out a match for three hours and the person would get tired and get defocused. And so that, sure, it's mental predominantly, but there's some physical aspect to it too. But I agree. Bit, there's yeah. some continuum to, to that as well. Um, so thanks yeah. for those stats. 1,221 stats. By yeah, Cast we did, Matic. didn't examine that much. Um, yeah, and, and, you know, one thing I just wanted to note there was one... Um, very, very much thank you to, to Brian. Uh, well, I'm B Marcy. I'm not sure it's Brian. So B Marcy. B Marcy. Uh, yep. That that's really encouraging. Getting a new boost, boost. Oh, definitely. Like yeah, that. definitely. That's uh, that's that's really encu- like it means the world to us that uh, current's bricked up. That that uh, someone is doing that. And then the other really fun one was uh, I saw Dave messaging in real time because normally a lot of the time we get the boosts and they're after the fact like they're while, I, yeah, while yeah. I'm sleeping so I wake up to them so that one was really cool because I saw him send the first one and then five minutes later I saw, saw him the other one going do and I just went yeah like yes that's, that's so cool, cool. That's, cool. That's, cool. that's so so cool so, I do like that uh, yeah I, I do appreciate those coming in for sure here's another one from Dave so again in competition I like Karen wilt under the mental pressure of competition Simply That's running it. in a straight line as fast as I can takes all of the mental aspect away compared to a handstand where a slight muscular overcorrection might be a purely mental mistake induced by psychological pressure. Yeah. 1,221 sets by Castomatic. Yeah, I, I would even say uh, mental competition I, I fail as well. Mm. If it's like really important that I make like this next chess move or if it's like, you know, just... Something I, I can do all the time, you know, flicking a pencil straight or something mm. or like walking along a beam, which doesn't really like the physical mm. aspect is not the hard part of True. it. Um, you know, sometimes when I actually yeah. find for myself, it's actually good when I make a competition, when there's no competition, there's no winner or loser. So is it really a competition? I don't know. But in my mind, mm. it is. Yeah. And I'm easily going to be the winner of whatever I'm setting in my mind, but it feels good anyway. So it's like today, <laughs> I was explaining to you before we started this podcast, yeah. I was doing some clean and jerks plus some handstands. Now, handstand walks. And I knew that there's nobody in this whole gym that's going to be doing this or even handstand walking, but it's still, I was like, yeah, I'm going to go and do like 25 meters and I, I dare it. anybody to come and like actually well, go and do this better. Well, nice. Good one, good. And the last one here from Dave Jones uh, and Peter, you will like this. He sends through a foam finger number one with an image of a foam finger number one. How cool 1, is that, right? <laughs> 1,221 sats sent by Castomatic. So again, Dave Jones and Peter Deslav are fighting it out for... What are we going to call them? The number one spot, the number uh, one... I wanted to give them a name. Number one gra- lounger, the number one grammar, number one mortalite, yeah. number one... Yeah, well, Demi mortal. I don't know. Mortal. Anyways, but of course, appreciate it. Dave, appreciate it. Peter Slav and, and I, do, I, I appreciate it. I do want to think of a way that we can give back to the, the winners, like the people who are mm. boosting, whether it be, you know, at the end of the year, mid-year. Uh, I think current said he'd fly you out to USA. Ah, uh, to USA, to Australia. I, I would be more oh. thinking along the lines of like, I will fly to you at some point. <laughs> that would be, be interesting. That would be more along the lines of what I'd be thinking of, but yeah, that's a big commitment. I'm not Come on, man. Sure Canada's can... <laughs> not too far away. Where's Dave? Dave's over in... Um, Dave's in Alabama. Alabama? Yeah. That's not too far. It's a it's a more centralized world than you know. <sighs> we'll see. We'll it's see. more centralized world. All right. So Back I'm, to it. Yeah, I wanted to bring up a couple of points. So one was, uh, you know, what is the driving underlying force behind crypto? For example, so you, some people might say it's decentralization. It's, it's uh, you know taking back control of the the money, i.e., the sort of power, away from these the banks, the governments, the mm-hmm. these people, they who have they. Uh, had had control of it for too long, sure. and they're making bad decisions, and I don't like it. Uh, and I'd be saying, you know what, I'm leaning more away from the ideals of you know decentralization is what we want like this is the thing that we want more of it is good sort of Mm. like anonymity is more anonymity good or not and once again i'm fence sitting because i like to do that i'm always oh yeah and i was sort of thinking like you know it's it's more of a swaying metronoming of of all human history it's like Mm. freedom and restriction progress and regression centralization decentralization centralization can be really good can be really really good it can uh here's a couple of the things that you give up when you're decentralizing economy of scale uh you know the unique and ideal individual environment to create something so if you think of a power plant 
you do you want it right next to uh, a dam if you're creating a hydroelectric one hmm. is having one out in the middle of the desert useful no, no. Uh, so there's going to be certain areas on earth where things are better more ideal and you want to put things there hmm. you, you want to be by the river because you can transport stuff really easily by boats hmm. and it costs way less um, so you're giving up that uh, you're giving up security in many cases because you could make one really really secure place or you could have 15 random ones all across the globe and maybe they aren't as mm. as secure well I'll, I'll just on that one i will push, push back on that one because i can already smell pita's comment coming on this one <laughs> security though like you know the can, you can say yes but if you centralize then you've got one point of failure as in like you get one hack in one place or you get one bad thing happening then you're up shit creek with everything else because if you're decentralized you're distributing yep. away yep so it's just it's such I, a I, I would just say in that case you know it depends on what is, is what it is that you're centralizing or decentralizing hmm. if you're True. if it's uh, maybe something that can affect everyone in the world hmm. maybe you don't want and, and you know is it dangerous would it be better to have uh, more nuke sites and, and you know let's decentralize the hmm. ability of everyone to have nuclear weapons I want a bloody nuclear weapon <laughs> We should have that more decentralized. Hmm. No, that's a bad idea. You, you don't want random jackasses like me having the power of nukes. No. no so um, I, w I would say yes, 100% depends on the, the context. And so this is then getting back into why it is that we're, we're sort of seeing this real push for it recently. Mm -hmm. And I think it's just because we've come to the edge of the centralized tipping tippy toeing on, on, on the seesaw it's it's been heavily heavily centralized for a while mm -hmm. and now we're we're due for some decentralization so we're jumping back the other way and you're going to see the same things you're going to see people decentralizing stuff but the centralization will creep back in again mm -hmm. and it'll just be a new boss so in, instead of the old bosses we've got the new boss in and they they're doing the same thing like they've got more power they've got more wealth whatever it is well exactly about. so like the the transition so let's let's <clears throat> let's play devil's advocate and go like to the total evil at end of things a lot of people in cryptocurrency have made bank right sam bankman freed is the richest 29 year old or 28 year old or maybe he's 27 i can't remember exactly his age but something like late 20s late 20 year old in the world Imagine if him and a couple of the really big power plays in the cryptocurrency space who've got like billions of billions decided like Actually, it's centralized the shit out of this F FTX and Binance and whatever. And all of a sudden, oh, um, fees quadrupled, quintupled, 10x. And we're actually going to keep all that money. What are you going to do? Where mm. are you going to get your Bitcoin from? Where are you going to do all this stuff? You can get it in other ways, but predominantly most people are using exchanges. So there is some centralization there Just in the way that you say, get it. Go back to that episode where we were talking about how we would steal someone's seat. <laughs> yeah. <purchase. laughs> so there's there's ways there that I go, hmm. yes, there is the, because there's probably good players uh, in the system, generally, you're not seeing that, but just like in all systems, you can have good players, you can have bad players. If you have lots of bad players, I think for sure people would say like, oh, look at all these people with all this power because they control so much of that particular coin or token. You know, is that a good thing? Is it a bad thing? Not sure. Here's another example that you might actually uh, be super aware of. VFriends, NFT. Uh, would you say that's a pretty decentralized system or a pretty decentralized project as a whole? Oh, you don't have to say it's fully, but maybe people would consider that it's an NFT an NFT project, it's sort of decentralized. It has some centralization aspects mm. because the smart contract itself, you know, it's all tied back to the one company, which is through, v, uh, you know, um, Gary V and um, VaynerX as a whole. So there are some centralizations there. It's tied to one entity that's like being the main spokesperson, which is Gary. But here's another one that you might not know. Gary actually holds over like a thousand V friends. Mm. So of the 10,000 available, or however many it is, it's about 10,000, he holds a thousand of them. So in circulation, there's going to be 10% less purely because he holds 10% of them at any one time. So then it's like, oh, okay, it's more centralized than decentralized if you start thinking of those ways. But because he's a good player in the system, it's not like anyone goes like, oh, that's a bad thing. It's just like, okay, well, 
for you know for whatever purpose he's got them it allows him to do marketing etc 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 but what if you know he became a bad player in the system and took all of that money i think i think if you calculated he has about a thousand v friends at the bare minimum they're about 13 ethereum each 13,000 ethereum you can do the calculation of how much money you just got sitting there you could do pretty nasty things with that if you wanted and centralizing the the cost of these v friends and whatnot he's not doing that but there's the possibility of becoming that because of the more centralized way of that hmm. Hmm. yeah okay yeah, interesting here's another i just want to uh, make sure i don't forget this point as well um because i want to tie it back to we're talking decentralization and i want to just talk we, you mentioned web one and web two, web two right and the what i found in the big pe- period in january of sort of or december trying to realize you know what is web three in my definition i actually came up with nothing that talked about decentralization okay like for me the definition was it is the web of data basically right in terms of a very interconnected data and data points and the big things i called out within it from my research was so i said the web three is the open web aka where data isn't owned but shared can be accessed by anyone anyone anywhere on anything but in particular the things i called out was it's a ubiquitous web which means it's basically everywhere um it's a semantic web semantic web so that in itself is that um the ability to be connected to all data everywhere um and then the augmented intelligence web and spatial web so it's uh, that ready player one style of just being kind of spatially across anywhere but in all of that definition that i came about i didn't actually even talk about blockchain or decentralization and i went i kind of thought about it and i went well, why didn't i like why didn't that come up and i went i think the the word blockchains come out let's say 2009 2010 and people have gone oh it's a more decentralized system but the word decentralization has existed for a long long time and expressed in many different ways i think it's always existed so the whole spatial the the breadth of whether something centralized and decentralized has always existed and in previous systems like in financial systems and everything it's just that now with blockchain and cryptocurrency and the like people are going oh i can see that i can operate in a more decentralized way sure doesn't mean that it's completely decentralized it still exists in the, well, in the boundary of they a, can or the system can because i think that's a, a, a difference like there's it's not like because blockchains are coming around i am acting in a more decentralized way it's more i'm this okay I'm, true. I'm, jump, system, I'm jumping into a system which is more decentralized true i'd say the system is more decentralized but let's let's go specifically individuals we've both got digital wallets mm. who owns them me us right when have you ever had the ability to hold an application or hold your money somewhere where you own it yourself well i mean how 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 different are they from a a bank then i guess in 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 that in in that case like who who owns the money then Mm. like it's not a real thing it's sort of existing digitally yeah 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 well but you i I don't you own the you own the the spot on the contract on the chain that is being exposed to you on the wallet Mm. so you can you can actually definitively say there's that amount that i own whereas with a bank you see the numbers but it's actually not there until you well request i it. mean like the i i have you personally gone to the blockchain yourself and not using like any uh accessing tool like, like ether scan or anything something. like that going oh, to no way no yeah. way at all no no yeah because no. it's exposed to a digital wallet as in like the the api calls that are made and i think this is a point also in the video is like hey just so you know we're using a digital wallet you're using a centralized API service mm. that calls that information for you to see it. So yeah. the, the, this is like the point I'm getting at, I guess, is it, the cryptocurrencies and the, the claim of decentralization, I would say yes, is if, you, if you're going by like the technical mm. definition, mm. They're, they're probably doing a bit better than the banks, but it wouldn't be by much. Like it's, it, for me, it feels like I'm still trusting a whole bunch of things along the process and I don't have the time nor skills to mm. to bother to go directly into the blockchain and look at it. Like I just, like there's not, that's now never going to happen for me. Mm. Um, and so it's it's more, I guess, uh, I, th- I think there was a, a 
point that got reached with the previous sort of system, and this can happen with any of them, this can happen with governments, yep. with countries, with uh, corporations, with anything which is multiple multitudes of people doing lots of things lots of activities happening mm. there's just a, a point where it becomes too centralized and then like the negative parts of humans jump into it the greed the fear the all that sort of stuff and so it's sort of like here's the new bosses same as the old bosses but we don't know it yet like it's, yeah, it's, it's like right, they, yeah. they still have to keep up the more of the facade of of being nicer and stuff. Like I, 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 I guess like the the point is there's decentralization in itself to me has no almost no value in uh, in in of itself. Like if yeah, I, I like, yeah, if yeah. I got if you were like this thing here is more decentralized. The the process of making this Rubik's cube is more decentralized. I would probably be like. What is no. what does that mean? Why why well, should I care about? That? And I think we go back to the definition and why I wanted to call out Amazon's one specifically. Network, net work, as in if you've got a hundred nodes, and by nodes I'm talking just like points in the system that are interacting with the data or the transactions, right? So you have a hundred of them, and you can provide all of that data and transactions better centralized. And no one's got a problem with that. Why would you go down the path of distributing? Let's say, this is my example, say. Now, if you've got one node in this system, let's say it's you on Mars and you alone, are you going to care if it's if you've got a centralized, decentralized system? Mm. Doesn't matter. It's just you. Like, it doesn't actually matter. If you've got two people, you know, does it matter that it's one person got, you know, centralizing um, the data rather than decentralize it? Maybe, maybe not. I think it really depends on the network system that you've got. So if you've got every single human on earth operating in this more distributed sort of operating system as opposed to super centralized yeah that might be alternate alternatively better because maybe you've got less power and control with huge entities that control everything so i could see that that moving that power to a more decentralized way definitely better but what happens if you decentralize too much you have anarchy because basically you've got power distributed up absolutely everyone you've got no uh, structures in place to actually be able to support people. It's just like absolute pandemonium because everyone's just controlling everything. Or said it another way, everyone's accountable for themselves. And so when everyone's accountable, no one's accountable. Mm. So you could yeah. also see issues coming from that as well. Yeah. Maybe another w way of thinking about it would be, are there certain things that n need to be decentralized because when they're centralized, they, they end up corrupting, I guess, or becoming like less efficient than the, the the system should be or maybe once was so if you think of maybe the, the the money system like maybe it worked really good people weren't having much problems with it hmm. before we got off the gold standard and i think it was 1971 or something like that um but then just progressively it became more centralized governments had more control over, over their money and then we we could you know the average person had less input Mm. let's say what what would be like maybe we we need that that base thing right at the base where it's like we want decentralized money or for example but then all the other sort of stuff like the applications connecting to it the way i can trade it and mm. i use that sort of thing maybe that is okay for it to be centralized and to be highly centralized so um maybe it's you know the uh amount of the the companies that are extracting minerals from the ground we want them decentralized we don't want one monopoly we don't want just one rio tinto having the control to to pick out all mm. of them from the ground but it's okay if the where they're being stored is all in one place just for you know Storage technical safe. purposes for efficiency purposes mm. for uh for because amazon can you know create products from that and, and sure. move it out really quickly or something like that so yeah i'm just wondering like is it just we just need like a little base layer like the base layer needs to be decent decentralized mm. and then we can just have enough centralization on on the sort of the web connecting up to it from the individual to it yeah i mean i'd agree that there, there would be definitely opportunities to be more decentralized in some aspects more centralized in others i don't know if i could think of an example 
straight off the top of my mind, I'd be like, oh yeah, that would be more better if it was more more decentralized and less. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think those were the, the main ones that I was coming up with. Um, here's just like a couple of random mm-hmm. stuff that I wrote though, which um, could be interesting. Uh, I was saying uh, decentralization is annoying. Um, so imagine if there was one guy who just created this machine and then he could instantly transmit some radio waves and it goes directly into your head and it sounds like he's talking in your head like yeah, that annoying. that amount of overwhelming power if there was that sort of power trying to decentralize or like trying to decentralize that i'm just not sure would be useful i think at, mm-hmm. at that point you'd just be like i'm just going to listen to whatever the fuck this dude's saying <laughs> because you know he's talking in my head i can't sleep like i literally can't live mm-hmm unless I, I sort of do what he wants me to do, that sort of thing. Uh, another one would be like, what if there was just random barriers so that um, imagine there were centralized exchanges for accessing your money, i.e. banks, mm-hmm. um, but there was no ability to, to really communicate, like languages just became instantly way more harder, 10,000 times harder mm-hmm. for me to communicate or for someone to learn another language to be able to to communicate in between english and french and swahili and Mm. german and then those sort of banks would just have like there'd be no way for them to centralize because there was just a random barrier or uh, that was insurmountable Mm -hmm. or something like that so maybe we need to 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 find random barriers to 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 stop to induce in centralization centralization. or something like that like just real um sort of like pointless i mean that's sort of what bitcoin does in a way for example it's just got all this pointless calculation Mm. to to stop people acting stupidly i guess yeah i guess maybe like you couldn't you could impose more penalizations the more centralized you're trying to become to then put you away from doing that i guess Mm. yeah anyway just a couple of random thoughts there i think this episode was like it was interesting uh researching but it was i knew it was going to well, be hard talking about. i think i think this one calls out something though like right so again as mere mortals as us right and we've been in the space all of absolute shit all but yeah we probably let's just say general population we might know more than the general population are we the most knowledgeable about crypto no mm. are we the most knowledgeable about centralization no but the mere mortal or the average individual out there probably knows as much as we do or less so I think this in particular is more to call out that when you hear the word decentralization, specifically when it applies to blockchain or cryptocurrency, I think being the knowledge that it's not black and white, again, it's a spectrum. The word itself has existed well before cryptocurrency mm-hmm. and it applies to blockchains. doesn't mean that a blockchain is automatically decentralized. We talked about how there can be NFTs that appear to be centralized, but you know, centralization can still occur because you're utilizing Web2 protocols here being a cloud-based storage for your system so yeah. it's not a bad thing it just means that's just how it is that it is current and to be honest does it need to be 100 percent decentralized not in all cases and i still can't call in my mind what's a place where 100 percent decentralization is like absolutely the best thing yeah and, and it's like do you want your happiness decentralized you know it my happiness is very centralized if my parents you like mm-hmm close friend get dies or gets injured or something like that that's that's you know so centralized it's it's mm. it's located across you know s- several a people. myriad of people yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. my uh, ability to to sleep i've got two places where mm. i can really sleep comfortably and then the rest are like the street you know? yeah yeah the street and death um if you if you're trying to take it to the nth degree of like i need everything to be mm. decentralized i need my uh, transport decentralized yeah, it just doesn't make it doesn't make sense when you when you think about it all the way down it's like no you actually don't want all decentralized. <laughs> yeah. you actually don't yeah. want that yeah or else you, you'd have a painful life yeah you you want that um that toy or whatever mm. you you want the process of that being decentralized like it's creation decentralized and, and whatnot and where mm. you can buy it decentralized and no no that's pain in the ass no. it's just pain in the ass so yeah my final thoughts on this is um, I think that there is benefit to being more decentralized in some aspects. I definitely champion the fact that Bitcoin and cryptocurrency as a whole is more decentralized in a financial aspect than the general uh, financial, I guess, yeah, I'd, spectrum I'd agree that we that. work in. 
but I wouldn't say that we have to be 100% decentralized in every which way, including financials for it to be a successful thing. Yeah, yeah, for sure, yeah. for sure. All right, cool. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. To Any this, other comments at all? That we... No, no. Um, Peter had to, to run off to his uh, day shift, so thank Good. you. Thank you for joining us, Peter, as always, and as well as Mr. Onion Jr. and Westside Baby right at the Thank start. Thank you, Pernus. Uh, we, we, all, we do appreciate it. I've got my shirt on, reminding you to boost. What does so it say? It's boost! boost! With the lightning, just fountain.fm. Fountain. So, so, repping the fountain. That's it. Uh, yeah. Yep. So I I had a... Uh, I'm, I'm very supportive of, of the Fountain FM app. Uh, it's, it's the one I use the most. Um, but I do use... Uh, the other day, I used... Pod friend, are you so? Curacast a couple of days ago. No, you didn't. I what did. For? I did. I, so I wanted to look it up to see what it was looking like. Not. I wouldn't even say to use it. I just opened that up okay. to look at it. Was so. it better? Because it, sh- it it should look. It, it definitely looks better than it did. I can't uh, remember what it used to look like. It looked really badly. <laughs> like it looked really really I'll bad. Have at the and, I'll have to go. I have to think back to when I first, <laughs> first last season. But I did look at Curacast once. I think it was more because it was Dave that uses it mostly. Uh, um, yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure. I can't remember who uses it the most. We'll see what it looks like for for me on my phone, but yeah, I I remember when. Sorry, it's customatic, customatic. Oh, you're looking. Sorry, customatic, customatic. Oh, okay, customatic, yeah, sorry, no, customatic. that that's um, that's but like Curacaster is somewhat better. It's it's still not not the nicest, but they're getting better. They're getting better, folks. Uh, it's definitely better than I remember. <laughs> than what it used I remember to be. when coming coming into podcasting two point and they're like, this is the you know they're sort of highlighting it as one of the best apps, but and and look. It is very good because mm. he, Stephen B, adds features in really quickly, and he is always, he, he's not so much about the the UI. He's about let's get as like much shit into here as I can. I'm the tester sort of guy. Yeah. You you create a new thing. All right, I'll I'll create some code and it'll be running within two days. That's pretty cool. Um, and but yeah, I remember coming into the the, the 2.0 world and just being like, damn, this is this is the best app. This is really. Uh, not so great, but yeah. no, he's uh, he's made a lot of improvements, even on the UI sort of side of things good. as well. Mr. Onion Junior, see you boys, good app. Thank you, my friends. Uh, for everyone at home, we would love if you could send us a boostergram, newpodcastapps.com. Choose whichever one you want from there with value attached to it. You'll be uploading some Bitcoin and, in particular, onto Bitcoin onto the Lightning Network, and then sending it through to us in a message format. We'll leave it there for today. Wow. Alright folks, that's it for today. De- de- decentralize mm. our, our outro. Me immortal lights. <laughs> yeah, there's no way of doing it. <laughs> One out. Garnet. Boop. Boom boom. End stream. See ya people. Ooh. 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 Ooh.